Thank you. Oh, we're live. We are. What's or happening? Are we? Are we? How do we know? <laughs> Welcome to Daily Philosophy News Show. Oh, that would be an awesome show. Because I kind of want to do that show. Don't you want to kind of do that? Specifically, specifically about philosophy news. You, you can't know? believe. <laughs> You can't believe what just happened in the world of philosophy. Or Kierkegaard, you? your assumptions. <laughs> it's the philosophy pun show. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a Nietzsche one. I probably should just stop and do this show instead. So, are you uh, are you prepared? I was born prepared. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Here we go. Tom was a man I didn't personally know, but every day I listen to his tech news show. If you have a dollar to spare, to keep Mr. Merritt on air, to Patreon forward slash Ace Detect, you should go. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, June 16th, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me as he does most Tuesdays, Mr. Patrick Beja. DTNS contributor, independent podcaster, man of letters. How are you? Man of leathers? <laughs> man of leathers. I wears many, many pieces of leather. <laughs> I wasn't aware, but I guess, you know, having seen uh, uh, Mad Max two times, I could be into that. Yeah. Uh, yes, I am, I am Patrick Beja, and I am an extremely tired version of Patrick Beja again, because I've been... Um, Following all of the conferences from E3, and the the Sony one was from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. my time. That was harsh. Yeah, that's so. anything in the 3 or 4 a.m. Uh, region. No matter where you are, if you have to get up at that time, that's that's just harsh. Yeah, that's the worst because if you if you want to not sleep and do it then you're going to be tired. And if you want to sleep and then wake up to do it, you're going to be tired too. So, yeah, life is hard, right? Life as a podcast. Yeah, so hard. <laughs> uh, full disclosure, though, that, that, that Patrick is very tired when we tell you whether it was worth it for him to get up <laughs> at four in the morning. Might affect his mood on that, Matt, what was announced. We'll find out. Uh, let's talk about the headlines. CNET called Sony's E3 press conference a mix of nostalgia and exclusives. Okay. Halo creator Bungie announced a new expansion for Destiny. That's coming in September. Sony also has exclusive deals for early access to Square Enix's next Hitman, called Hitman, as well as exclusive access to Street Fighter V and Call of Duty Black Ops. That was a steal for them. Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Syndicate will offer PlayStation-only missions, and the next Disney Infinity game will come with an exclusive Star Wars figure in a PlayStation-only bundle. Square Enix remake Final Fantasy VII is a timed exclusive for the PS4. Sega launched a Kickstarter for Shenmue 3, which funded its first $2 million goal in nine hours, making it the fastest funding video game on Kickstarter yet. Sony introduced a first-person shooter called Riggs, exclusive for Sony's Morpheus virtual reality headset, although we don't know exactly when that headset's coming. And Sony PlayStation View, the TV service, expanded to San Francisco and Los Angeles, while Sony also made vague promises about future a la carte channel purchasing options. Oh, 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 and apparently Last Guardian is coming in 2016. You thought I was going to leave that out, didn't you? Yeah, we thought, yeah, they, they opened with it, so that was pretty big. And, and it was, oh, just to be clear, uh, the exclusives on Hitman and Call of Duty are, uh, the maps are first on PlayStation uh, 4 for Call of Duty and a few missions on Hitman. It's not the entire games like it is for Street Fighter V. Um, but there is a lot to say about Sony. I don't know if you want to do it here or in the discussions uh, topic. But, yeah, let's hold, let's, let's hold off. We'll leave yeah. them with the details here. We'll tell you our thoughts in the wider E3 discussion in a bit. And uh, until then, we're going to talk about Nintendo's E3 digital announcement conference that had a lot of new titles for 3DS and a lot fewer new titles for the Wii U. Nintendo will release Amiibos for Bowser and Donkey Kong that will work in the Wii U version of Activision Skylanders Superchargers in September. Or maybe they're going to be... Skylanders that also work as Amiibos. No one's sure. 
The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes comes to the 3DS, a three-player cooperative take on the classic adventure franchise that has online play and arrives this fall. It's kind of puzzly. I think it's reminiscent of uh, Four Swords, for those who remember mm. that title. For 2016, the 3DS will also get Metroid Prime Federation Force, which is not quite a Metroid Prime game. It's a multiplayer-focused online shooter set as a spin-off, and also Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, which is another installment in the uh, Paper Mario series of RPGs. For Wii U owners this year, there's Super Mario Maker coming September 11th, Yoshi's Wooly World, October 16th, and later this year, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Sorry, I was yawning there. Uh, <laughs> and Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. And of course, Star Fox Zero is coming uh, towards the end of the year, during the holiday season. Finally, Nintendo, Nintendo also teased Fire Emblem Fates, which is the Western version of Fire Emblem If... And uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, the next installments in the popular JRPG series. Uh, that's Xenoblade Chronicles X. So the two things I took out of Nintendo was, ooh, clever uh, cooperation between Activision on Skylanders, because obviously it just means more people are going to buy games for the Nintendo, which is good for Nintendo, and more Skylanders, which is good for Activision. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's as revolutionary as some people were saying when they first heard it. Also, yarn is apparently the new big thing at, at E3 <laughs> this year. Yeah, between Yarny and, uh, and Yoshi. Um, the Skylanders thing is uh, Wii U exclusive, of course, for the Amiibos, Amiibo-type figures. So it's only going to be to speaking to people who already own a Wii U. I don't think anyone is going to go out and buy a Wii U just to be able to play those, game, those characters in um, Skylanders. And honestly, again, I have quite a few things to say about Nintendo's conference. It was this... Uh, summary makes it seem super, kind of exciting. It was the opposite of that, and mm -hmm. it was even a mistake for Nintendo to do to do one at this stage. We're going to talk about it during the discussion topic. All right, I've got some non E3 news as well. Twitter is going the way of autoplay. The next web reports that video and GIFs will now play automatically, but that the sound will be muted until you click on the video or turn the phone to landscape view. It's similar to what Facebook does. Users can opt out. Uh, but you have to opt out, and Twitter automatically disables the feature if it thinks you have low bandwidth. Change rolls out today to Twitter.com and Twitter for iOS. Android doesn't get that feature yet. This time, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Mm, yeah, a lot of the, I'm not part of the uh, anti-autoplay crowd as long as it doesn't activate sound. So... For me, I'm, it's okay. I have a problem when I, because I open way too many tabs, so it's partly a personal problem. Uh, the autoplay will often cause issues and cause tabs to crash and all that sort of thing right. in Chrome. But. That's true. I, I, I am super OCD and I close my tabs as soon as I don't need them. So I don't Well, have I just issue. not script it now, so forget about it. <laughs> Computer World reports that a UK company called Intelligent Environment is promising to bring emoji-only passcodes to banks. They claim emojis as a pin will prevent hackers from identifying common and easily obtainable numerical passcodes like a date of birth or a wedding anniversary. There are 44 available emojis, which equals to 3,498,308 unique combinations of non-repeating emojis. No banks have signed on to the system yet. It's, it's, not too, it's not silly, though. This is a really clever way to get some attention for your company uh, because anybody can do this. It's, it's, you know, emojis are Unicode. And, uh, and you're right. You're right. Absolutely right, Patrick. Like, if you were to make emojis kind of a standard way of doing pins, then... You got 3,498,308. However, that means you can't use that pin at a lot of terminals where all you have is a numerical keypad. Uh, so there's a long way to go. And the bank's reaction from this Computer World article, anyway, seemed to be very nonplussed, as if they were not terribly mm -hmm. sure. In, in fact, even the spokesperson from Intelligent Environment said, oh, it'll be around, you know, we'll see it within 12 months or so. <laughs> so I, I don't know. What you're, what you're saying makes a lot of sense, Tom, but 
I really want to use cake monkey poo as my passcode for Just my don't bed. Don't give away your passcode. <laughs> no, you're right. Like the idea that if this was actually implemented, not just somebody saying, "Hey, we're going to do it," uh, I'd be way on board with that because it it it's easier to remember. You know, elephant monkey alien face uh, fish flag, if that's your thing, uh, <laughs> than it is to remember. You know, six one seven six or whatever. Uh, so yeah. I, I, and and there's more combinations and all that. Um, oh, it's not just cake, monkey, and poo. You're right. There's 44 of them. So, yeah, there are possibilities. TechCrunch reports Adobe's Creative Cloud a new milestone update was announced. They, even though they constantly roll out updates, once a year they roll out all the big updates uh, kind of to get attention, make it easier for you to plan for, for these kinds of updates. Big addition is Adobe Stock. Now, that's not the stuff you buy on the New York Stock Exchange. It's a new stock photo and video service created after the acquisition of Photolia. Uh, Photoshop and Lightroom also got a dehaze filter. A lot of people are excited about that. Photoshop now has support for artboards as well as an HTML5 based design space that shows only the tools optimized for app design. So app developers might like that as well. Is the Adobe stock part of your Creative Cloud uh, subscription? That's that's really big. You still have to if pay for individual Oh, for the rights. license for the photos. Okay. I so don't know if that. they have a certain amount that are free because you're a subscriber. That's possible. Uh, but yeah, they, they intend to see this as a revenue generator, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. TechCrunch reports that Box is now integrated in Microsoft Office Online. Box has already been available in Office 365, and Box competitor Dropbox integrated into Office Online in April. So many boxes. Yeah, this is Mike, Microsoft's playing it right. Uh, they're saying, look, we want you to store it in OneDrive because that's going to be easier for us, easier for you. But hey, you store it in Dropbox, we don't need to not use Office because of that. And here's the big thing. You know what? I'm starting to look at this and realizing, wow, it might be easier for me to use Office Online than Google Drive because mm -hmm. I can access these various storage options. And Google Drive, I have to move everything to Google Drive if I want to use the Google Docs system. And you know, I don't know if you've ever used uh, Office Online. Uh, I, I, I'm not quite clear who can and can't use it because whenever I go to um, to... OneDrive, I can edit the documents that are there in Office without a specific subscription. And that uh, piece of, of web app is amazing. It, they've, you know, I don't think Microsoft gets enough praises for their ability to create amazing web apps right uh, now. Those Office web apps are honestly mind-blowing. Well, I shouldn't say mind blowing. They're excellent in the way that the best office, the best web apps you've seen on the web are, and uh, it really provides a, a very viable alternative, even for lightweight uh, document editing, like we all use uh, in the tech world with Google Drive. It it's mu much more powerful. Yeah, there, there were various versions of Office 365 and Office Online in the past. Uh, so I think there's some confusion out there. But yeah, anybody can go to office.live.com, use Office Online for free. Uh, and you get access to Word, uh, OneNote, PowerPoint, Excel. Uh, so go to OneDrive, if, where you host your files, and try to click on the files from there. And you'll probably be able to use, you know, I don't even know who can, because I don't have a subscription. I can't no, you don't need a subscription. There's limits on how many files you can have. There's limits on storage space. Uh, and so Office 365 is for if you want to be able to access through your desktop versions of the applications. Because obviously the online version of Word doesn't have all the features. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're right. A lot, it, Microsoft doesn't get enough credit that Office Online is essentially Google Drive right now, but with Microsoft. Yeah. The Verge reports Razer's open source virtual reality platform now supports Android as well as position tracking. That's a bigger one even. Position tracking was a noted absence from the initial release back in January. Hardware support within OS VR will eventually be added to allow Android phones to take the place of a dedicated display. In total, OS VR now up to 144 supporters. Probably their biggest ones are Unity and Unreal Engines. And... Yes, I was not going to comment on this, so go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you just have nothing to say. No, it's, it's, well, there isn't that much to say. It's, it's like, great job, open source virtual reality platform. I hope you continue to gain momentum. But yeah, there's not much to say about it at this point. But I'm happy about this. Time now for some news from you. DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com. If you don't 
know about it, you haven't been listening to the show because I talk <laughs> about it every time, but you should go there. Uh, lots of great stories submitted by the folks in the audience, voted up, voted down. Uh, by the folks in the audience. Now, it's not representative necessarily of every single person in the audience, but we certainly pay attention to it because there's you know, close to 5,000 people in there letting us know what they think. Uh, and of course, Captain Kipper submitted the last pass blog post that attackers had penetrated the password manager's network and accessed account email addresses, password reminders, server per user salts, and authentication hashes. hashes. So no plain text account passwords. And with LastPass, it gets confusing, so pay attention. The passwords that they gathered may still be difficult to crack, as LastPass uses 100,000 rounds of server-side PBK, DF2, SHA-256, in addition to client-side rounds. And to be clear, the database of the stored passwords that you store in LastPass for other accounts, the whole reason you use LastPass, was not accessed. Uh, only the master password uh, files, and those were encrypted. They were very strongly encrypted. Uh, but in reaction, LastPass has put in place email verification, suggesting turning on multi-factor authentication, if you haven't already, and encouraging all accounts to change their master password just to be extra safe. Uh, the criticisms of them so far have been like, well, they took three days uh, to email people. Some people say, that's faster than most companies would. Other people say, well, my I didn't know that I was vulnerable for three days. Uh, and then, of course, there's the general theory that, hey, as Darren Kitchen said last Friday, you got to not store really sensitive stuff in these central locations or you could risk losing everything. And so were all of their users' uh, passwords uh, accessed or just a portion of their user base? Sounds like all of them were. Oh, they were all okay. extremely heavily encrypted. And that's, you know, that's okay. one of the things that we usually see is they, they stole the usernames and passwords and the passwords were weakly encrypted. These are very strong. If you have an easy to guess mm. password, it's still possible that they could crack it if they really want to. And it's possible because they got the salts that once they crack one uh, and they got the authentication hashes, they might be to, able to crack more. But everything that LastPass has done as far as saying, we're going to make you a, a re-authenticate re if you don't have multi-factor authentication, uh, we're going to suggest you change your master password just to be safe, should make this theft useless if you take those precautions, at least for now. And if you don't have uh, two-factor authentication, then what are you doing? Yeah, turn it on. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. <laughs> Star Fury Zeta posted the article from Mashable that Google Maps can now warn you if a destination will be closed by the time you get there. Of course, the hours of operation have to be correct, and Google's traffic estimator has to be accurate. But still, it's a nice touch for Maps. Yeah. I it's cool. It's it's you know it's so clever. Of course, they tell you how long it's going to take for you to get somewhere if you know take traffic into account and send you a reminder with taking that into account as well. That makes complete sense. Just an additional small service is cool. The real Frank L sent us the New York Times report that the FBI is investigating whether employees of the St. Louis Cardinals baseball team hacked into the internal network of the Houston Astros baseball team to steal data on players. Investigators have uncovered evidence the Cardinals officials may have obtained internal discussions about trades, proprietary statistics, and scouting reports. Astros GM Jeff Lunau left the Cardinals in December 2011. The FBI believes the attackers used a list of passwords that Mr. Lunau had used while working for the Cardinals and continued to use while working for the Astros, and that's how they were able to access the Astros network. So no high-level hacking, just a little social engineering. And yeah, it's very disappointing for me as a Cardinals fan that this may have happened. This is, you know, just like the EA conference, I tune out as soon as I hear it has anything to do with sports, and that's what happened here. But there's a really interesting story that you missed then, Patrick. About, is there? Yeah, and the lesson of don't use the same passwords in multiple places. So oh, let, let, hey, let me try lesson. this. Let me try this. Real Frank L. sent us the New York Times report that the FBI is investigating whether employees of one company hacked into the internal networks of another company to steal <laughs> data. Sensitive data was obtained, apparently, oh because God, the really? employee had left the first company, gone to the second company, but used the same passwords he used as the first company, and they were able to access the data. That is unconscionable, employee. <laughs> You should have changed the password you use. <laughs> yes, now I'm, all the I'm outraged. Excellent I've, job, Tom. I feel like we now need to do like two versions of every story like <laughs> if, that involves any kind of sports.
All right, that's a look at the headlines. E3, man. Uh, okay, Sony came out, said, hey, The Last Guardian. Everybody got super excited. Uh, ooh, then they said Final Fantasy VII Remake. A lot of other people got really excited. Shenmue 3 was pretty exciting. <laughs> well, Shenmue 3, that was just weird. I don't think I have a problem with the idea of going to Kickstarter. And it, it's really a, a matter of just why not do it if you can. They, they have, but the, the real problem with Shenmue 3, uh, you know, they get on a huge stage with a huge hardware manufacturer who's also a publisher and say, hey guys, we want to make a game, give us money on Kickstarter. It did feel weird. That being said, why not? You know, they, they, they could do it. it it's being fu fun, uh, funded at an incredible rate. Did you watch the video of uh, the, the Kickstarter video for Shenmue 3? Uh, no, I didn't watch that video. I did watch the, okay. the announcement where they did the countdown well, that led to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Do yourself a favor. Go watch that video after the, the, the show. It is the lowest production value video you have ever seen. It is horrendous. It's ridiculous. It doesn't give any confidence in anything ever. Still, you know, they're making, they're meeting their goals whatever. Shenmue is a very highly anticipated, no, desired game by the fans. And, uh, but keep in mind, even though it has close to $2.7 million in uh, funding now, that's still less than 40,000 uh, contributors. So it's not like the game is going to get funded just with that amount of money or you know, sell, sell enough just with those guys that are super, and gals, that are super enthusiastic. The Shenmue 1, if my sources are, are correct, uh, needed, if you adjust for inflation, $67 million. So that's, a lot of people have been saying, well, you could just, you know, if you're going to uh, uh, fund it anyway with this money, why do you even need the whatever? They're not going to fund it with just the Kickstarter money. They need a lot more money than this to create the game. Anyway, Shenmue well, how do you feel about the fact that it's $2.6 million to make a German version, but $2.7 million to make a French version? Uh, the Germans win again? No, they lose all the time. What <laughs> Wait a minute. They didn't win um, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't care about the fact, I don't get outraged about the Kickstarter thing. Nowadays, people know what they're getting into. Initially, it was a different story. People were sort of getting deceived. They thought they were going to get something that wasn't what they were ultimately getting, and they didn't know what kick Kickstarter was. Now, if, if anyone says, well, I thought I was buying the game, no, Every, they're being disingenuous. Everyone knows, especially in this community, what Kickstarter is, what you're buying into, what you're getting, and if you don't, I think it's on, your, you, know, on you as a user, as a Kickstarter user, to, uh, to be a little bit better informed. T times have changed, so I don't have a problem with it. Everyone's being honest. But lest we uh, somehow give you the impression that the Sony announcement was mostly about Shenmue 3, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, what was the Sony announcement mostly about? Um, it's, well, honestly, it, I loved that announcement. I thought it was the press conference was good, but it was mostly about fan service. It was fan service, fan service, fan service. They opened with The Last Guardian, which is a, a spiritual sequel to uh, Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, which are games that had a huge following, but not a, it, they weren't a huge commercial success. So this was really trying to please those people specifically, and anyone who, hasn't, who hadn't heard about that game was probably a little uh, uncertain about what was happening there. Um, the... the uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake was so well received because uh, there's, again, a very hardcore following of that game specifically that wanted it. And last year, they announced uh, Final Fantasy VII on PlayStation 4, but as a port, as a, a, a regular old graphics port, and people were very disappointed by this. So the remake was well received for that reason. I don't think they're huge titles for the general well-being of the PlayStation. Uh, so it was huge amounts of fan service, and what uh, I, I sort of realized discussing with people on Twitter and talking about this with uh, other people is that Sony really doesn't have a great lineup for this year. 
ultimately, the only big hitter they have is um, uh, uh, No Man's Sky, that space exploration game, which we, we don't really know what the gameplay loop is going to be like. We also uh, but don't it's know very, the release date. We, they said the release date would come soon, but not when the actual game would come. They've said it, it, it is this year uh, holiday season. If it isn't, they don't have anything, which is you know, frustrating for the Microsoft uh, fans who are... Well, let's finish on Sony very quickly, though. Um, they, everything Sony has is usually uh, next year, early next year. Um, they have a few uh, exclusive on portions of content for this year. Uh, they did make a big statement about Call of Duty being now uh, the new home of Call of Duty is PlayStation, and that's a big game, obviously. And they said that all the map packs, all of them, would be coming first on PlayStation. And it might be a couple of weeks, you know, a month early, but still, it's important. If you're going to choose between two essentially identical consoles uh, and you're a Call of Duty fan, then you're going to want the one that gets the, the map packs first. Um, same for Hitman, Batman, there are a couple of uh, exclusives there. The one thing that I was really surprised about was that they basically did not mention um, Morpheus. They, it was a throwaway sentence about that game rigs that they e didn't even demo at the show. It's basically a mech, uh, mech uh, a giant robot fighting game, which makes sense because in a robot you would move your head independently of your body. Um, so it would make sense for a VR game. But Apart from that, they were showing, you know, a lot of things for 2016, but not a lot for 2015. And I was saying Microsoft fans must have been a little bit frustrated because ultimately Microsoft had a slightly stronger lineup and bigger announcements that you mentioned uh, last episode for this year. Uh, and still, even though that that situation is completely true, uh, I think that the preference of the uh, players went to Sony. Ultimately, all E3... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tom. I keep t talking. No, no, I, I didn't see that. I di I, I, and that, so that's a, very, that's a very subjective assessment that, that the, uh, the winner was named Sony. I, I was listening to the IGN broadcast today. I was listening to Jeff Keighley's broadcast yesterday, and he had a lot of people on, and they generally seem to prefer Microsoft uh, there. Now, you're talking about the sentiment of the people that you were seeing online talking about it, I'm talking about commentators. And so that may be the difference there. Uh, and I, I don't think Sony did a bad job because of all the fan service, you know, just but among Final Fantasy VII and The Last Guardian alone, you had people just screaming that they were feeling great about it. And, you know, that's interesting that, that on the Jeff Keighley show on YouTube, uh, they went to look at Twitter and the Twitter people were exploding about those very two things, which is what you're talking about. Whereas the, the more sober people who cover this space said, yeah, but they didn't, they're saying what you're saying. They didn't announce anything that's coming later this year. And so I think that may come back to be a problem for Sony later in the year. However, they're already ahead. They may feel that it's worth it to give them a little bit of space so they can ramp up and have an amazing 2016. Well, I think it's never a good idea to give too much space to, you know, your competition. And in this case, they might have. But I think it was a missed opportunity for, for Microsoft because they did have cool things. You know, the com uh, compatibility with 360 games is cool, but it's not great. And currently, the, the big question is whether or not Microsoft would manage to reverse the dynamic uh, of that generation of consoles with... Uh, Sony having a, a lead in sales and an installed base that is significant. And in order to achieve that, I think they couldn't have done, they, they can't just do as well as Sony does. And it's kind of what is my impression with this. Maybe Microsoft, in the mind of some people, did a little bit better, but not significantly, because Sony might not have a lot of things for this year, but for Q1, 2016, which is not, you know, that far away from the holiday season, they have a few uh, bigger titles and some exclusives as well. I think you um, may have accidentally one, just read more Sony fans than Microsoft fans because, you know... No, I, now, I'm, now I'm talking about the way I'm viewing the, the trend of the... not. Okay, so you personally think Sony did a better yeah. job just because no. <laughs> they had the better stuff? Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is they basically did an equally good job. But okay. in order to reverse the dynamic, Microsoft needed to needed do to a do significantly better job. Gotcha. Um, and they would have needed to do something to jolt 
their uh, the people towards their side. Something like you know a, a slim version of the console, or maybe a, a VR uh, a compatibility with Oculus, for example. You know on the Xbox One, uh, that would have given them an, an immediate win. And the compatibility with 360 game is cool, but it's not good enough to reverse the tra the, the the dynamic. So Tomb Raider is cool again; it's not cool enough. And same for Halo um, Halo 4, which anyone who is interested in Halo 4 is probably already going to have purchased an Xbox One. So I don't think that we're going to see a, a reversal of the existing uh, balance of power between Microsoft and Sony this year, which might mean. I, I think I might be thinking that uh, Microsoft, because they didn't explode at this E3, um, might have lost this generation. And, you know, keep in mind, losing this generation just means that they're saying less than Sony, but they're still selling buttloads. Um, but I don't think they're going to catch up to Sony by, by this point. I don't think, that, this is the last thing I want to say about Sony versus Microsoft, because we got to talk about Nintendo too. I don't think that, Microsoft has lost the generation yet. I think I think it would be a mistake to say that just because Microsoft didn't leap in front of Sony at this conference that that it's all over. Uh, the game is is a is much too long term for that. I think you're absolutely right though that Microsoft didn't do enough to definitively leap in front of Sony. But Microsoft has been catching up on its own and they did the fundamentals well. And sometimes that's all you need. It may not be as dramatic. It may not be as obvious. But sometimes when you just do the little things well, if the other team doesn't do something great you know and 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 super excellent that you can take advantage of right away uh you can catch them up and and that I think is Microsoft's strategy. They're hoping that we'll continue this forward progress we've been making. We will catch them by the holiday season, and then 2016 will tell the tale. And I think we'll see big announcements from both these companies at next year's E3. Well, I agree on that, but I think that they're not going to catch up by this holiday season. Unfortunately, because I love Microsoft and I want more reasons to buy an Xbox One. I'm not being par partisan here. Uh, and I think that 2016, uh, uh, Sony showed a stronger lineup. Uh, Microsoft has a strong, stronger lineup for 2015, but for 2016, Sony had a stronger lineup, which is why I think they're going to keep. But we'll see. I, you know, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens. And Sony also has Morpheus on the PlayStation side. Microsoft, unfortunately, doesn't have anything on the virtual reality well, side. Well, no, or they, they have everything. The I mean, the, the, the other way to look at it is Microsoft said, Valve, great, we'll work with that. Oculus, great, we'll work with that. Uh, a HoloLens, yeah, we're going to put that out. And you could look at it as Microsoft having more options because they're more of being more of an open platform they're not an open platform not, in this case not really because that's a mistake that a lot of people are doing they're assuming that uh, microsoft announced compatibility for xbox one for these vr platforms they didn't they announced compatibility for windows 10 which is coming uh, to xbox one later this year i think you're going to see compatibility well, there that is the one uh ace trump in the <laughs> trump card in the uh, sleeve let's not get How political <laughs> um, if they announce, you know, by at the end of the year compatibility on Xbox One, then I think it's the one way that they could actively, you know, that's what I said initially. If they have uh, Oculus compatibility, it's a huge win for Oculus and a huge win for Microsoft, and that might reverse things. It could happen, right, for sure. All right, you are not a big fan of Sony or Microsoft in particular. We get that. You're you're very even-handed there. You, uh, you are a big fan of Nintendo, though. I know that. Uh, and I I know that you were not pleased by what mm -hmm. you saw today. So yeah, just to correct the statement, I'm a big fan of Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. I'm a fan of everyone. Um, but it's yeah, Nintendo's no fan. <laughs> uh, Nintendo's E3 uh, Nintendo Direct, which wasn't really a press conference, it was a pre-recorded video. Uh, I think on that uh, on that one, I think we'll agree that the reactions pretty much everywhere was were at least very underwhelmed. Um, Nintendo did a, a lot of small announcement. Nothing was really uh, exciting. They hinted at the NX system. As they said, they wouldn't talk about it uh, this year. They hinted and said, we'll talk about this in 2016. But everyone seemed underwhelmed. And to the point that what they were showing was so... Uh, well, underwhelming, that I'm, I'm thinking they should not have uh, done that video uh, 
at E3, they would have been better off not doing the video at all because I honestly think their brand and their goodwill was tarnished a little bit by this thing. It feels like they have a uh, small stable of games that they're going to release until the end of the year, um, and that's going to be, you know, mainly Star Fox, which did not look super good because the Wii U is showing its limits, and for these, t these types of games, you need probably a little bit more uh, horsepower for the artistic uh, style they're going with. Um, and no, no mention of uh, the Legend of Zelda Wii U that will come probably in 2016, but that's the current console's uh, last hurrah. And it feels like Nintendo is now, uh, on the development side, 90% on the NX. So this current generation of consoles that we still have to live with for probably 18 months um, are losing steam very rapidly. And, and the, it showed in their, in their presentation. But Amiibos! Right. Some people, you know, there is a, a segment of the population that's super... The Muppets were kind of cute initially, but I think it was... I've been saying that those uh, Nintendo Directs were um, awkward at first and then became kind of awkwardly cute. I think this one was the one too many, where it <laughs> went back to being just awkward and weird. Um, All I right. Was, so, bottom line, was there anything good at this year's E3? There were many good things. Um, th there wasn't VR, which was surprising. VR yeah, was everyone thought this was, oh, this E3 will be dominated by VR. Not the case. And not the case. And I think that pushes back the development of VR from, you know, early to mid-2016 to at least end of 2016 because games are going to be a very important component of that. But, um, no, there were huge, lots of cool things. I mean, the games that were presented are a huge uh, uh, potential for, for fun and for gamers. Um, the games that were uh, introduced at the other conferences were, were super uh, exciting. There were Bethesda's conference, by the way, was great uh, for their first conference at E3. It was a, a huge success in every respect. And I did a, a very quick, unscientific um, survey of people's level of excitement for the different um, conferences. Sony went in first with 44%, Microsoft second, 25%. There might be, you know, uh, preferences there, but EA and Ubisoft had 4 and 6%. Bethesda had 20%, so they really, I think they might have stolen the show as a, a, a developer or a publisher and not a, a manufacturer. Um, a few games were, were very cool, you know, Doom, Dishonored, all of those. Fallout 4, uh, of course. Um, the the uh, Tomb Raider, I'm a huge fan of. Gears of War 4, it's going to be coming in 2016, but it looked cool enough. Mass Effect 4, 2016 as well, end of year, but still. Uh, Unravel was exciting, but the one game that I think I'm, uh, I was the most surprised about was uh, Horizon, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, that game was, came out of nowhere. That's um, the Mecha Dino one, games. right? Yeah, and, and when you have, hear the pitch, you know, it's post-apocalyptic world with mechanized dinosaurs, you know, robot dinosaurs that you're hunting. It sounds like the stupidest thing ever. But no. the intro to that game, well, the stupidest and coolest, I, I, I agree. Um, but the intro to that game made it look and feel genuine and, you know, the way that a uh, heroine uh, um, interacted with the robots in a kind of almost... Uh, avatar kind of way, you know, she killed the little one and she said, oh, I I'm sorry little one, I, I couldn't let you call your friends you know, apologizing to the machine that she considered an animal of some kind, it was strange and interesting so there is a lot to be excited about it's just that the, the dynamic is not changing with that E3 and we thought it was going to, there were going to be l big shakeups. I don't think we're going to see them. Yeah, I agree with you there. I'm excited about Super Mario Maker September 11th, 2015. Uh, they're, they're having it in Best Buys in the U.S. and Canada between June 17th and June 20th as well. I think that's the coolest thing that I saw Nintendo announce. Uh, PlayStation View came to Los Angeles, so I got a chance to try it yesterday. It's really well done. Uh, needs more channels and needs a little easier way to find what's on demand. There's a little confusion about like not having the rights to show some things. But the interface uh, is 
very slick compared to Sling TV. I, I'm also excited about No Man's Sky whenever that actually comes. Yeah. Uh, and Tomb Raider, I, it, it, I was fixated. You know, I'm sitting there taking notes, looking at live blogs. Tomb Raider came up and I was just stopped everything I was doing and just mm. watched. Uh, I, just, I thought yeah. that was amazing. T Tomb Raider is an excellent version of Uncharted. It's uh, it's it, it looks like a fantastic game, uh, which is ironic because Uncharted was an improvement over the Tomb Raider formula, and Uncharted Four Uncharted looked looks pretty good amazing too. as well. Street yeah. Fighter Five, I'm I'm a huge Street Fighter fan. Um, but the one thing maybe okay, just to to finish up, uh, we're being long, but. The the one thing I really enjoyed was the um, the, the the change in uh, female representation in the game in, in the, the in the show both on stage and in games. Um, I think there's there was a, a realization uh, last year and maybe even the year before that there was an imbalance there in the way we approach that, uh, which isn't really an issue the the way we represent females in in games, and it shows because the developers realize that oh wait a second we we are not doing a good job at this and probably we should pay a little bit more uh, attention and it showed in the games this year um, so in the games and again on stage we even had a, a, a woman on uh, the Nintendo video which is unheard of um, but yeah I think that that's a positive thing and I think people are, are realizing after the the entire um, controversy that that sparked that you can have badass female characters in games, and it's not a big deal. You're still going to have good games. So that, was, that made me happy. I think it is sad that we still have to point it out, uh, but you're right that it's progress. And I think the underlying problem is that, you know, we just don't have an open enough system so that we don't have to pay attention to that, and it would just naturally occur. Um, yeah. hopefully well, it's, it's changing. I think this is, yeah. when, this is when it's changing, so... Our pick of the day comes from Franz in insert weather conditions here, Austria. I, I don't know what your weather conditions are, Franz. By the way, not a requirement to give us your weather conditions when you write to us. Uh, just a lot of people seem to. Uh, he says, to play your existing PC games in full stereoscopic 3D, I recommend TriDef 3D at TriDef.com, T R I. DEF.com. The software acts as middleware driver for games that use Direct3D 9, 10, or 11 and offers extensive tweaking, works with all brands of GPUs and many types of 3D tech, including color separation and even VR headsets. Uh, there is a list of supported games on their website. After testing all my games, I found a surprisingly large amount of them work. He says 75% of them worked, some as even as old as 2003. Here are the two downsides. He's like, $40 US, it's expensive, but there is a free two-week trial if you just want to try it out. And the hardware requirements are steep. Uh, also, it takes a certain mindset to tolerate the tinkering and potential frustration that comes with the initial setup process. However, he says, once I got it running, it was great. Uh, so if 3D is your thing and you're willing to put in a little effort, check it out. Try def dot com t r i d e f dot com the beauty of being able to tinker with PCs is unparalleled. I wonder, though, oh, by the way, there's a, a one conference left, which is the uh, PC gaming conference uh, later today, so hopefully we, we might still have exciting surprises there. Uh, but I'm wondering if they provide the uh, puke bag with the thing, because uh, <laughs> puke bags that have not, not been... There's an open uh, source design for a puke bag, though, that oh, you can well, implement there you go. as an extension. Yeah. So send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Uh, Alan found it interesting that Microsoft adds backward compatibility to Xbox One. He said Sony got a little backlash for no backwards compatibility in the PS4, but they did start out with some backwards compatibility in the PS3 before they phased it out. To me, this makes it seems like backwards compatibility is only a move to make when you're behind in the market. Kind of goes to your point, Patrick. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Uh, and then Tim says, I apologize if you and Veronica... Co oh, oh, sorry, we actually already covered this. He was writing in about LastPass. We covered that in the, uh, the uh, subreddit. Uh, finally, we got an email uh, wanting to let us know about uh, something called the Columbus Area Board Gaming Society. And I apologize that I cut off the person's name who sent this to us. Thank you for sending it to us. I try to keep up with board gaming news. And I wanted to note that in 2013, board game publisher Cryptozoic rescued the project, uh, the doom that came to Atlantic City. He's referring to Allison and Todd talking about the FTC taking consumer protection ad action against Eric Chevalier for his Kickstarter campaign that failed. Uh, Cryptozoic did this without receiving any money from the original campaign, and uh, our, our emailer felt they deserved a shout-out for a gesture of goodwill towards the board gaming community. Excellent. 
Did you know about Cryptozoic jumping in like that and, and uh, helping out to rescue a, essentially a game that, that people had tried to, to fund but didn't get funded and then got in trouble with I, the FTC? I didn't realize, but you know, the, uh, the, the card game and, and uh, board game community seems really tight-knit and uh, like these kinds of things would happen. It doesn't surprise me all that much. Um, and by the way, the, the, the person's name is uh, Jonathan Anglin. Thank Thanks, you, Jenny, Jonathan Anglin, uh, for sending that along. And thank you uh, for digging that up. And thank you for being on the show. That's it for Daily Tech News Show. Patrick Beja, you can follow him on Twitter, twitter.com slash notpatrick. Uh, go get his English language podcast at frenchspin.com. Uh, and obviously, you guys are going to be talking about this on Pixels, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, so first, I was on uh, Alison Sheridan's Nocilla cast this weekend, and we discussed the WWDC, which I was complaining jokingly I couldn't discuss uh, on this show last week. Uh, and so she invited me, and we had a ni nice chat about that. So thank you, Alison. And if you want to listen to that, it's available. Um, and of course, Pixels, yes, we're going to be covering the entirety of E3 with uh, one Scott Johnson, uh, with whom actually we covered the conferences live uh, yesterday, the, the main conferences, uh, including the one in the middle of the night, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and I'm sure we're going to have a huge amount of fun on, on the joint Pixels uh, Boo Show episode, which will be recorded tomorrow, and it will be in your feeds uh, shortly after. So tomorrow, you should have it in your feeds on the Pixels Show. Go to frenchspin.com to find out more about that. A deep, deep thank you to the folks uh, who see fit uh, to back the show. We've been fluttering around. Around uh, our, our latest milestone goal was to be able to have daily con contributions from Scott and Veronica, uh, and we're close enough that we're not going to make them stop just because we ducked down uh, below that temporarily. But uh, if you at all get any value of, out of the show, we do ask uh, that you consider giving some value back. Patreon.com slash Ace Detect is uh, the main way that you can do that. Uh, and we, we say basically, you know, a dollar a month, that's five cents a show at the minimum, uh, it, it, at the minimum amount of value. And there's, there's reasons and perks uh, to get in. You get a little more information about the show. You get to interact with people, give us your opinions and stuff. Uh, so if you would like to support the show, patreon.com slash ace detect or go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can give us a call, leave us a voicemail, 51259 daily. Listen to the show live at alpageekradio.com and visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll be back tomorrow with Raj Dude and Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. The show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> Boom. Goes the dynamite. Great show. Uh, what should we call it? Uh, cake monkey poo <laughs> or not it's kind of compelling <laughs> I get a little nervous putting poo in a title because it drives some people away but <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you... I'm looking Hold on. sorry I was yawning there is up there at the top I, can you do emojis did we learn uh, emojis, emojis break some people's uh, podcatchers, so it's probably better to mm -hmm. not, to save that powder for when it's desperately needed. <laughs> when it's just irresistible. Open source puke bag. <laughs> Open source puke bag. It's, can you 3D print a puke bag off of Thingiverse? You could take... You could take uh, Paul Gannon's title and just substitute, so like, Cake Monkey Tears Devil. And then it would be the emoji password. Cake monkey alien face. Yeah, that's a great Wait, title. Wait, what are you saying? Every time you guys try to say the word poo, the internet cuts out for me. It's like you're being censored. Poo. That, that works. <laughs> so you were suggesting alternatives, I believe. Is yes. that not correct? That is correct. What, what were the alternatives again? Robot. Zombie. Cake Pirate monkey, monkey zombie? Ninja. Cake monkey alien face. Cake monkey chicken. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Password, cake monkey chicken.
Zeladir makes a good point. Do we want those people that would be driven away by Cake Monkey? Well. <laughs> Uh, you know, it is a tech podcast. We're we're not. I mean, we're not poo averse, but <laughs> we're also not. We're not fighting for the right. Yeah. Necessarily. To Pooty. You got a right for your right to say poo. No, it's to Pooty. It's yeah. That's to Pooty. To Pooty. Oh, Djibouti. Final uh, Fantasy so, VII remake. I'm oh, sorry. What about Fantasy VII remake? No, I was just looking at the titles. All right, I'm gonna go sleep for three weeks. Oh, yes. actually, uh, actually, I'm off. We didn't even mention it, but I'm off for uh, a couple of episodes now, right? Yes. So we're being no. filled in for like quality folks. Excellent. No. Well, I I hope they're not too. Quality, and you don't, you know, you let me come back. I'll put it this way: one of them is Veronica Belmont, and one of them is Molly Wood. Oh, so I'm fine. No, uh, really. <laughs> that's we had to go I that think far. What he meant was one of them's already a contributor, and one of them has a full-time job at Marketplace. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm. I yeah, thank you. There's also that aspect. Of <laughs> that speaks volume about the quality of my contributions. <laughs> <laughs> We had to go all, all the right. way back to the original cast of Buzz Out Loud to replace you. That's what we're trying to say. Thank you. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Yeah, that's a much better way of looking at it. I'll take that one. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Uh, thanks, man. I love you very much, and I love you that I can see as well very much. Miss you. And love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. See you in three weeks. All right. Yeah, we're going to miss you. Seriously, have a good uh, time off. Thanks. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, hey, bye. I, I at some point really want to go eat lunch before class or else I'm going to be a miserable sumbush. Why you leave, you I, why you not eat lunch already? What's up with the people? It's just been that forever. Just you need a pill. That's called lunch that you can just swallow. I was, I used to dream about that as a kid. Me too. I would see the uh, Looney Tunes cartoons. Sure. They had an episode <laughs> where Bugs Bunny that, gets yeah, shrunken cool. down and he comes across a bunch of dehydrated foods that like are really small and you add water and they get really big. Like 12, I, uh, 20 times I remember uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, that, that very first Star Wars novel. Um, I had Luke Skywalker eating a food cube. I don't think it was called a food cube, but it was essentially a food cube. Like a, like a Nor chicken bouillon. It just gave him all his nutrients in one little cube, and I was like, oh, I want that. But then you realize that there's so many other things that go on when you eat that your body needs. I don't realize nothing. You can't make me. Okay, you're right. No, you're right. That's that's the problem with um, those liquid diet soil things. Soil it. They keep trying to balance it to have more fiber or whatever. You know about soil, right? Yeah. It's made of people. Well, I don't think it's made. Of, that may be the problem. Is the current soil isn't made of people yet? It's and like I a think they're fighting their beverage. fate. Well, no, there's that soil and green. It's made of people. Oh, no, there was that whole, I'm not sure if it's still a fad. Uh, no, it is a fad where people, especially in the tech industry, work such long hours, they need to get their meals in quickly. And so they've resorted to these, like, not high protein, but, like, these complete nutrient shakes that you can buy and that you drink instead of eating, like, lunch. It's almost like if you yeah, get the... Swim. Yeah, well, the first one was. I'm sure the other ones have different names. It's the same. Same thing, but it's uh, it's kind of like the uh, slim fast diet, except you don't really eat a balanced meal at the end. You just keep drinking it, so you can put in more hours to work at your startup, make the VC happy. I'm dangerously close to that moment, but really, I'm ending up in five minutes at the Warner Brothers commissary, so it's all gonna be okay. Looney Tunes. I hope. <laughs> oh, did You're you at the see right it? place for the dehydrated Looney Tunes food. 
Oh, you're right. Ah, yes. I totally am. That's probably all that's going to be left at 30, to be honest. It's like, is this a piece of bread? I will eat it. If you're walking up to the commissary and you hear, dunk, 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 then you'll know. I am actually excited when I have a little bit more moolah, disposable moolah, to go to the Warner Brothers um, gift shop because I anticipate many cool things are there. But that's Yeah, that's why it's there. Designed to separate you from your money. Yeah. Grandpa Chang. <laughs> you know what? Once you have a kid, you start thinking like, eh. You were like that before. It's, don't pretend it's, don't it's blame true. your daughter. <laughs> Just blame the fact that you were born a miser. <laughs> I think Jen Mark would say like, Roger, you're the only one here that's going to be a millionaire. It's like, why? It's because you don't spend any money. <laughs> I think, well, the part of it was, like, I was like, well, you know, all the stuff, like, I would have normally bought, I used to get in for reviews. So it's like, I played with it. It's like, oh, okay, I don't really need to buy it. And so I think that kind of was one of the big things. Mm. I'm sure game game uh, game reviewers are kind of the same way. You get so many of your games um, as review copies that you're just like, oh, I don't really need to buy. Yeah, why would you? Question. Yes. Can someone do the video part for me today where you upload it to archive? Because yes. that will make the difference between the eating and the not eating. Yes. I'm so grateful for you eating. You got it, Roger? I'll do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Can I guarantee like it'll be done like within an hour or anything? But again. Yeah, I don't... Sometimes it takes an hour for the process to unfold on slow days, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I still need to pump out these notes. So. Revelations. Yes. Yeah. Cool. I'm just well, I'm going to go audio. think big thoughts about a web series. And by the way, thank you to every single person who wrote in or tweeted or gave us information yesterday about, about um, 360 degree video because even if I don't think I can assign it now, I can talk about how they all should be thinking about it. That's great. And that is super helpful. So, uh, And I'll be going into detail tell more about it in other classes, but I just felt like, I was like, oh, thank you, Chat Realm, thank you, DTNS listeners, thank you for being so smart. You guys rock. Yeah. You really. rock, like the Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> the good ship DTNS. All right, go eat. I'm going to go eat. I'm Put going. Put nutrients I'm going. into your Bye. bloodstream. I'm almost done here. Yes. <laughs> and watch trailers. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bye. 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 Trailers are good for your digestion, don't you think? Uh, yes. You know, I, I will say maybe it's trailer fatigue, but like the more trailers I see, the less I'm like, eh, I maybe I'll like movies, games, whatever. It's like, eh, eh, uh, maybe. I'll tell you one thing I've noticed uh, for sure. Not so much that for me, but uh, I go to the movies now and I've already seen half the trailers. And it becomes, yeah. and I get that reaction, and like, oh right, I've already seen this one. So you know, it used to be the fun part of watching the trailers before the movie is like, oh, that I haven't, you know, haven't heard about this movie, get to see a little bit about it. But now that you can watch them, like immediately on your laptop, and I do, it kind of remember takes some when of the... there were cartoons and there were oh, only two trailers yes, before a movie. You could see actually no. remember seeing freaking Bugs Bunny playing before a movie. I watched uh, Ferdinand, the uh, the oh, shy, yeah. the bashful bull, or the whatever. Bull, yeah, yeah. Oh. Right Good before, um, I had the books. Ferdinand had books. This, I thought it was just the one story. Hmm. Well, maybe there was only one book. Maybe I shouldn't be using the plural. But I had a book that told Ferdinand's story. All right, that is it. Cool. I am out of the post. So typing. Uh, did we do an EMW this month? I don't remember. Anymore. Not yet. Because I want to talk about Rachel Dole's. <laughs> oh, you do? All right. Yeah. That, I don't know. I don't know Planning why. a topic ahead of time on East Meets West, that's kind of innovative, but we can, we can give it a shot. Let's see how it works. Uh, uh, I don't yeah. know. It's just because Jen's on it and like her friends are on it and I'm reading all about it. I'm just like, what? I it just is, think it's a very interesting it's topic. It's fascinating. Well, that's it uh, for us. Uh, stay tuned for your late local news. We'll see you next time.